I'm here at home with Arena Racing Company brand ambassador Safi Osborne. Safi, how much are you looking forward to riding on the turf at Donny? Yeah, can't wait to get going again. Um, sort of the soft ground um, has sort of scuppered my plans for the Lincoln and stuff, so I'm heading to Newcastle on the Saturday, but no, really excited to be there on the Sunday. And last season was, well, I certainly felt it was a real a breakthrough year. You almost doubled your winners, but your prize money levels went to the roof. Yeah, um, no, it was an unbelievable year. Um, I, I'd probably gone through my claim, I wrote out my claim in just sort of over two years and I, I kind of went through the whole period without riding a, like a decent winner and um, I was very lucky that last year I got on a better quality of horse and um, no, managed to get some bigger winners. And then riding for Ed Walker, obviously Random Harvest has been a, a pretty good servant for you. If you've got that one horse, do you then think right now I can go to Newmarket or I can go to Donkster or I can go to Ascot and I can go to some of the bigger tracks with a horse like that. Yeah, she was huge for my career. Um, I first got on her at Royal Ascot and um, yeah, she took me to like all the biggest tracks and um, no, I was lucky that she, she gave me my first couple of group winners and um, no, it's horses like that and horses like Metier um, who won the November handicap on and um, yeah, he was the, he was probably actually the first one that really um, like propelled me forward and um, yeah, the, it's horses like that you need at my point in my career and um, no, I was lucky that they came along at the right time. But like a, a horse like Metier, you know, to win a Chester Cup on him as well, that must have been pretty nice too. Yeah, I think the manner that he won that race was really cool. Um, I think it was probably the first time that people had actually looked at me and thought, she actually, she can actually ride um, and ride really well, and it was up to that to that level of riding in big races like that. And um, it's, sometimes it's just luck getting on those horses. Like it was luck getting on him in the November handicap, and then when something goes right, you stay on them, and um, they yeah take you to bigger and better things. Now the racing league has been a, a big part of your life. Obviously here with your dad, he's a huge supporter of of that concept. But also for you to be leading rider two years in a row takes a bit of doing. Yeah, I was uh, obviously lucky that I, I managed to get on some good horses in that as well. And um, it, I think it's a brilliant concept. Um, I, I can't, don't think we can knock anything that's new and brings more money into the sport, which is something that we're really lacking at the moment. Obviously, there's been things that have been tweaked over the first couple of years of its running. And um, I, yeah, I think it's exciting yeah, to see, see what else happens. And I think at someone at the stage of my career that I was at, to I got on a, especially a filly called Trigoni, who um, she won four racing league mm. races, and then she, I had a stakes winner on her, and it's, and she, for Clive Cox, and I'd, I'd never really ridden for Clive, so um, it was an amazing competition to sort of, sort of to launch broaden, pad almost, yeah, yeah, like broaden my horizons and. Um, yeah, it allowed me to ride for more trainers that I hadn't ridden for, and it, it really gave me sort of a step up into to riding for other people and um, as well as that it's I was riding for really good prize money every week and on ITV and it was getting loads and loads of coverage. And then how gutted were you that your season ended prematurely last year? Massively I think uh, when you start this job injury is something that you always accept will probably happen at some point. I think in the four years that I've been riding, I haven't gone a year yet without having um, a fall, which has caused me an injury or something like that. So it's, it's been frustrating, but um, no, I was I was lucky that it, it's all fine now. I was out for three months and it, it really, it, it did really sort of, it was gutting at the time. I was on a, on a bit of a roll and um, I was hoping that I was gonna try and get close to the 100 winners because yeah. it happened in the middle of October and everything was just going so well at the time that, um, I, I was yeah trying to get as close to that as possible and um, no it was it was really frustrating but um, yeah no it's uh, yeah it's just one of those things. But when you have that sort of injury and that amount of time off does it give you time to actually reflect on what you've done and then give you a chance to say right come on let's go because we're, we're at a stage now where I can really have an impact? Yeah and I, f I think I felt pretty secure in the places I was like I I didn't feel like um, it was going to cause me any hindrance when it comes to Ed Walker and 
obviously um hopefully not with dad yeah but um yeah i i felt i've been injured before and i've i felt more worried probably before because i wasn't as established i'm still not as where i want to be but i wasn't as established as i was when it happened and um I, it's still frustrating when you're seeing people win on horses that you would have ridden it's it's unbelievably frustrating and um yeah but it's just one of those things that you have to accept and um yeah try and move forward from it yeah and then this year's been fantastic start like going out to the middle east winning in doha and then being the first female rider to win at maidan that must have given you self-satisfaction yeah it was it was really cool to be fair um things have been a little bit slow back at home to start with but purely because people that i ride for haven't had that many runners and um there seems to be more jockeys around than horses running so um no, I think everyone's sort of in the same boat, but um, no, to go out to the Middle East and have some seriously nice horses to ride. Oh. And um, I've been, I've grown up watching dad have plenty of runners and winners at Maidan and the likes. I think I said an interview that sort of Toast in New York was one yeah. of the first horses. 2014? Yeah, it was yeah. literally 10 years. So um, yeah, he was one of the first horses growing up that I really remember here. And um and I sort of remember everything about, and I, I just remember, I think he was probably one of the first horses as well that really made me want to be a jockey. Um, like I remember watching dad, like hit this horse running in all the biggest races yeah. around the world and um, how incredible it was. And to think sort of like 10 years on that I'd be riding winners at Maidan was, is really, really cool. Yeah, and the fact that you're going back there as well, that's, you know, that must be something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm really, like Emiratiana won in Doha the day after Uzo won and um, he's obviously, he's a, He's a he's a vintage campaigner at this point, but um, he's running to a seriously high level still, and um, I think he's about a 12 to one shot for the Alquaz. And um, no, he he looks great, and he's been training really well. And um, no, it's it's really cool and really exciting to get opportunities like that. But to be part of that as well, and you know, you have to be in to win. So there's an awful lot of riders who'd like to be riding that horse. Yeah, definitely. I was lucky enough when I was still a five pound claimer that I I got to ride in the Gold Cup and World Cup night, and um, um, on a horse called Alec Knack that finished fourth there and when you sort of come relatively close that's all you want is to get even closer and try and win those races I think growing up I've watched so much racing around the world and it's what every top jockey wants to do is to be able to travel around the world and ride in all the biggest races and then having Tony Hind as your agent that must have been a bit of a breakthrough moment for you well yeah I think it all sort of kind of correlates with one like with each other and I, I joined Tony's books at the beginning of last year and he's been fairly transformative for my career and um, he's someone that's filled me with lots of confidence as well and lots of confidence in my riding and um, no he's been amazing and yeah I, I think just a lot of things I think sometimes in this game you need a lot of luck and I think there was just a few things that started to click together at the right time and um, no I was yeah it was sort of last year was a real sort of step up and what about all weather finals weekend obviously newcastle and lingfield do you know yet if you're going to be riding at either of those um i'm not 100 percent sure yet i might have to be in dubai um annoying because it's the friday before and um but um dad's probably got a nice horse called val sad running um who won at southern won a nice handicap at southern um a few weeks ago and um, he'll be going um, for the mile and a half race if he um, if he runs. But um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure whether I'll be there. Hopefully, I'd love I'd love to be there. It's brilliant prize money yeah. and it's, it's a, a big great day. it's a great day's racing. And it's obviously being Good Friday, it draws in a big crowd both at Lingfield and Newcastle. And um, there's some seriously top class racing that sort of rounds off what's a fairly busy winter on the all weather. And how important has your dad been uh, for your career? And how nice is it for you? when you ride big winners for him? I think now I probably enjoy riding winners for him more. I think to start with, I, all I wanted to do was ride for as many other people as I could. And I probably downplayed how much dad had helped me. Um, he was always very keen for me to sort of find my own feet in this game and to sort of make my own path and not not have him sort of looking over my shoulder constantly. And um, I'm unbelievably grateful for that. Um, he allowed me to sort of ride out for a lot of people as a as a apprentice and I wasn't tied down just to riding to him and um, I now I feel that I've established myself a bit more I I really enjoy riding big winners for him and any winner for him 
um, because I just know how much hard work and everything goes behind the scenes. And um, I think, yeah, I, I think definitely before I, I always wanted to downplay the sort of input and help he'd given me just because I wanted everyone to feel like I was my own person yeah. and not just Jamie Osborne's daughter. And then when you look back now, so you watch yourself winning on Metier in that November handicap, and then you watch yourself winning, say, on Emiratiana. How much have you improved and how much have you evolved as a rider since then? I'd like to think massively. Um, I was never, I wasn't stupid when I started riding. I knew I wasn't, I wasn't as good as I wanted to be. And I don't think anyone is ever going to be as good when, as they wanted to be when they started. And um, I think what helped me is I, I understood racing. Um, I understand the whole picture, but I was never as strong as I wanted to be to start with. And I, it probably wasn't until last year that I really was as getting to the point where I thought I, I was as strong as I wanted to be. I also think that I, I grew up always never wanting, I didn't want to ride like a girl as such. I wanted people to think I rode like a boy. And I'd like to think that if you'd watch me racing and lots of girls racing now, you wouldn't pick out who's the girl in the field. and. Um, it did take me a while to get stronger, but no, I, I'm pretty happy that I'm getting to that point now. And how aware are you of the fact that a lot of people look up to you now and think, I want to be like Safi Osborne? <laughs> I don't know, I've never really thought of it like that. Um, it's an honour if people do think think like that, but um, no, it's, it's always been something. Dad's always, the, the girl sort of angle of riding has never really been in my head. Dad always used to just say to me, if you're good enough, you'll make it. And it was never so much of because you're a girl, it's going to be harder. And he never, like growing up, I was never ever, that was never in my brain. And no one ever made me feel like it was going to be harder because I was a girl. And that's what I've always just thought. If you're, if you're good enough, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. And um, yeah, it's really cool to think people might look up to me. I don't know, maybe. Um, but um, no, I've never really thought about that. I'm doing what I do because I love it. And if, if someone else looks up to me, that's a bonus. Yeah, and what advice would you give to anybody who is looking at this and thinking, well, do you know what, I'd like to try, but I'm not sure? Just hard work, really. Um, nothing gets around that, I think. I think so many appreci people appreciate hard work, and um, I think sort of just... Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I think, I think it takes... Everyone develops at different rates, and, um, like, you're only going to get better from a, a large amount of experience, and, um, yeah, I think just some serious hard graft. How ambitious is Safi Osborne? Probably too ambitious, if that's, if that's possible. I think growing up, I think I, even when I was doing ponies and stuff, I used to joke, my dad would say, when, we, when I wanted to start eventing, I'd say to him, I want to win a European Championships. And at this point, I hadn't even hadn't done an event yet. So, um, and everyone used to laugh at me. And I remember dad reminding me of that when I won a European Championship three years later. And, um, yeah, I'm definitely overly ambitious, but I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, I don't believe anyone should be given a license if they don't set out with the aim to want to be champion jockey or ride big winners around the world. And um, yeah, I don't I don't want to be doing any anything else. That's that's what I want to be doing. I want to be trying to get to the top until the day I retire. And um, hopefully that's a long way off. So Safi, what we need now are a few horses to follow for the season. Um, I'm in a really lucky position that the people I ride for have got some really, really nice horses for the year. Um, obviously, Emirati Anna, I think, sort of might be the flag bearer yeah. for, for Dad this year. And um, I, again, I really like Val Sad. Like, I think he's obviously won at Sutherland. I'd say he'll be trying to work backwards from a Royal Ascot handicap or something like that. And an another filly that was bought from Germany called Drawn to Dream, who's raced 110 and she'll be going for some nice staying races. And I'm riding a really nice filly on Saturday, actually, for Ed Walker um, called Miss Al Peels. She was third in a maiden first time up. And um, no, I think she could be something special, something hopefully another random harvest. And then hot trainers that you're looking forward to riding for, you've built up a good relationship with Ed Walker. That's something that seems to be getting stronger. Yeah, massively. He's got some. He's got a lot of horses, but he's also got a lot of really, really nice horses. And um, he's always been someone that's the quality of horse he's had is is pretty, pretty high. And um, no, I'm very fortunate to have a good association with him. And um, obviously, I think this is Dad's Barrett Racing. Ian Barrett is 
invested in some really nice horses and hopefully that's going to continue and um there's a yeah a seriously high quality of horse here now as well and um no i've i'm lucky enough i've bought a house in newmarket and i've been riding out there quite a lot i ride out for James Ferguson. I can't believe you're leaving Lambourne. No, I'm not. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm only there a, f a few days a week. So, um, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not leaving. Don't worry. Dad won't let me leave. <laughs> I'm the last child at home. I'm not going anywhere too soon. <laughs>